Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Board Game Inquisition where we're here to offer you insight and information about the board games you might want to have in your collection. Today is a very special video, it only happens once a month, oh my god there's only 12 in the entire year. Um, and this is where we get a little bit informal and I talk to you about the games that have changed in my collection, things I've been playing, my wish list, and just, you know, a general kind of chit chat. So prepare yourselves folks, because this is possibly going to be the shortest monthly roundup on record. Let's have a look at September. I'm not going to lie to you folks, normally the monthly roundup is my favourite video to make in the month. Um, I love being able to talk about my board games in a really, really casual way. And I love being able to interact with you all and hear what you've been up to, but I'm just so sick um, and exhausted that I'm sorry for the quality of this video um, and the quality of me. Um, but it's important to me that I keep making things and that I, I don't fall behind on my deadlines. Um, and hence, the, so we're going to have this very short monthly roundup. And it's also super short for lots of reasons because September has been a funny old month. Um, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what it is. I think it's mostly to do with the fact that I'm preparing to go to Essen at the end of the month. And I've had a lot of work to do and um, to get everything done. And then having to play board games when you're not really feeling it or you're not feeling well is a horrible thing. Yeah, um, you know. Forcing yourself when you don't feel like it really burns you out and it seems to burn me out doubly. And I found that the more I've had to force myself to get things done or to get things finished, the sicker I've gotten. Um, and I don't and I don't just mean kind of uh, mentally sick or exhausted that I've, I've somehow managed to make myself physically sick too. So I have a bit of a cold, so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to endure just like I am. Um, so I'm gonna jump straight into the games I've acquired this month and this is not a big list because I'm going to Essen so you know you kind of want to save money and buy board games there. It'd be kind of a shame if you didn't wouldn't it if you're buying games all the way up to Essen. So today we're checking out my phone for uh, my list of games because they are so tiny I thought it was terrible to waste paper. Um, but I hope your month has been going better than mine. Like on a whole September has not been terribly bad it's just I've not been great and having to work or to um, kind of create things when it's it's difficult for you, it makes it super hard. You, you, I think you guys know what I'm on about. So the first game that came this month, if I was to do this in order, we'll do it in order, there's only three games um, we purchased. So the first one is called Cell Swords Olympus. Um, I hope I have that name right because I keep calling it Cell Spell Swords. No, it is in fact Cell Swords, I have to check. It's a tiny box game so it's down here. Keep my tiny box games. Oh, you actually, it's most of it's off screen. Big games, small games. Um, so Sats Wars Olympus um, is from level 99 games and it's a tiny, tiny, tiny game. And, and out of interest, it costs like six pounds to buy it. So there you go. But level 99 games are a company um, whose games I've really, really liked. They're generally really complicated things. They're very grandiose, um, but they're usually quite fun once you get over that learning bridge. Um, so they make things like Battlecon, um, which I really like, which is a two-player dueling fighting game. Still waiting on that Kickstarter and I back very few Kickstarters. So I'm always really disappointed when they're not here yet. Um, and they also make Millennium Blades, another kind of crazy card game where you pretend that you're a CCG player. So I was expecting something kind of spectacular out of this. So Cell Swords Olympus is a card game. And it's very reminiscent of one I played when I was growing up. So anybody familiar with the Final Fantasy video game series? I may remember that there is a card game in Final Fantasy 8 and both in 9. Um, and this one, this game is super reminiscent of the one in Final Fantasy 8. Um, and I kind of loved it. Um, and I played that game to death. So to see the kind of like real world implementations is really exciting for me. Okay, so what's it actually about? Uh, well, the game is basically you have a, a handful of cards and each of them has a number on each side of the card. And the aim of the game is to place your cards down in a 5x5 five five grid and flip your opponent's cards. And you do this by having a higher number, so a 6 will flip a 5. And you can place them whatever side way down you want. Um, they all have abilities. You play over two rounds and you score at the end of each round for the most points you have by flipping as many of your colour in particular rows. Um, it's actually really simple and um, the game is really quick to play and really fun. It doesn't kind of, 
it doesn't have all of that um, difficulty that other level 99 games um, and it was really 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 fun to play it's very quick as well um, so I've had a lot of um, fun playing that and it might be because normally in these head-to-head -head card games I'm not the victor but this one I, I feel like I've been preparing my whole life for this battle um, so I'm really happy that um, I get to have a I don't know I, I get to be in there and I, I <laughs> and I get to enjoy it as well so that's Cell Swords Olympus really 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 good stuff okay the second part of the rest of the shopping this is kind of funny um, because accidentally over the past, the end of last month and the start of this month, we acquired a lot of games by Stefan Feld. So we fondly named this month Feld Timber. <laughs> so you may know at the end of last month that I acquired Trajan and I acquired Oracle of Delphi and they were both great Stefan Feld games. And I acquired two more. Uh, actually, I didn't tell you about Oracle of Delphi, I told you about Merlin. You know when the month just blends into the end of the other and you're like, have I got to this one yet? Was this last month, this, this month? Um, so I'll talk about Oracle of Delphi because I, I keep mentioning it. Um, so Oracle of Delphi um, is one of the ones I've, I've managed to play so far um, from Stefan Feld. And there's something about saying his game that like evokes him, you know, it's like you get a, you get a feeling for what type of game it is by his saying his name. So Oracle of Delphi is a race game, um, to put it very simply, and it's a game in which the gods have given you uh, missions and quests that you must complete, and when you've completed them you must return to the gods and you be declared the victor. Um, most of these things are kind of set collection, and the game kind of focuses around this really weird way of connecting colours. So if you want to do the yellow thing, you have to go to the yellow tile to be able to do it. Um, when you set it up, it's very, very elaborate. Like, there's a lot to it. Um, but it's really, really fun to play. Um, of course, you've got a cool player board as well where you can earn extra god powers. Um, and to be on a whole, actually, it was a lot of fun because race games, I, I don't know, because there's always going to be just, you know, one victor. And I know that's true when you play other games, but with race games, it's very obvious who's winning or if you're really, really far behind. And it's very kind of detrimental, maybe, to how you play your game. Um, this one, it didn't feel like anyone was overly ahead for some time, and I quite liked, I quite liked that. And that the person ahead could fall into difficulties, so there was always a way to catch up. So, Oracle of Delphi, particularly liked that one. And the other one I've acquired is Carpe Diem, which was Fell's game from Essen last year. Um, I know nothing about it other than it's got 40 million punch boards um, and I know that sounds really pathetic but it was on um, sale on Amazon for a really cheap price. We've been enjoying all of these Feld games a lot. Um, so other than that I don't really know what it's about. Seizing the day I guess, that's what the title means. Um, but yeah, it, it, it looks like any typical Feld game and I'm, I'm quite excited to try it out. I think as I've said before I don't get a lot of opportunities to try other people's games so when I want to try a game out it usually means I have to end up buying for it, buying for it, buying it or trading for it um, and then trading it on afterwards if it doesn't work out and I'm quite happy with that system as it goes which is why I'm always looking for bargains and things like that of games that I've been meaning to try so Carpe Diem falls into that list. Um, has anybody actually played it before? What did you think of it? Um, I'd, I'd love a little bit of insight maybe before I get to it. So I've not really got to play a lot of the new games that I've bought because I've been rather busy with review copies. This is both both an amazing boon and a kind of slightly to my detriment because when you don't feel like playing games, it's very hard to do it. Um, so I have new games that I've still not gotten to yet that are my old ones, but here's what arrives this month and it's been kind of epic. There's, there's no way other way of putting this and it's kept me incredibly busy. So the first thing that showed up this month for reviews was Black Orchestra from Starling Games. Now Black Orchestra has one of the most interesting themes I've come across in a long time. It's a cooperative game where you and your friends are teaming up to kill Hitler. Um, like wow. Um, and so the, the game kind of takes place um, over a variety of years in Nazi Germany um, and you and your co-conspirators are trying to get plots in place to take Hitler down. Um, like from the outset that game is really 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 fascinating and what's funny is I have like I have a review and everything re ready recorded and I've given all my thoughts on the game and I kind of I kind of don't want to tell you everything yet because otherwise what would be the point of the full review um, but I, I do think the theme is a really compelling one and it's probably one that I think will stand out to a lot of people. 
<coughs> you're gonna have to hold on further for like more information at a later date sadly um i've been trying to do as many reviews as possible before essen happens so i can have a bit of a break and not have to make some for a few weeks but that in itself has been you know <laughs> it's been its own problem but that was a, the first review copy to show up so you'll be hearing more about that soon what you'll also be hearing more about is everdell and this is also from starling games so i'd like to thank them for sending me these awesome games um and i also have the everdell expansion pearl brook so these I've played some of and not reviewed yet, so that's pretty fair. So Everdell is a game of woodland creatures and you're basically trying to build your city. It's a card game and it's a card drafting game, hand management, you know, tableau builder. Look at me use all of the jive words. Uh, <laughs> the jive words. Um, so where you're basically, you know, getting things down in front of you and then you, a lot of it is actually about connecting cards together for bonuses or the kind of bonuses you can have in play for when you play further cards. Um, no doubt about it, it's a beautiful game. Like the components in this are crazy off the charts stunning. Um, I'm still undecided about the game itself. I've played it like three times now. And every time I play it, I still feel like I haven't wrapped my head around it fully and I, I kind of want to play it again. I feel like I'm missing something. Um, but to be fair, there is a good game there. I just, I'm not decided on how I felt about it yet. So that's all, that's all coming soon, people. Um, so that was really, really awesome. So I have two more review copies to get to and they're from one of my favorite publishers and this is Emperor S4 Games. Um, and those of you who know me know that this is, you know, these are my favorite peoples. I really enjoy the games they make. Um, I own all of the games that they've published. I've even reviewed some of them. Um, and I'm really delighted that they sent me to review copies of their upcoming releases um, for Essen. And God, I was so excited. I'm sorry, I said so fatigued and it probably is because I am. And this is a lot of hard work right now. And it shouldn't be hard because this is the fun stuff. Um, but I'm going to try and not use the word shouldn't and just, just go just go with it. Um, so I'll start with the game I'm least certain about. Um, and these two reviews will be released before Essen because it's important that that happens. And um, so I'll talk about Jiguan the Eastern Mechanist. Um, so <laughs> this is a game where you are a, me a mechanist. Like it's such a really odd word, isn't it? Um, and you're basically building mechanical animals. It's a really, it's a really interesting theme. Um, and the game basically works about you um, acquiring cogs or pieces to build your machines with that have to be kind of matching colors to the machines um, and matching numbers. And you, like if I was trying to explain it all, we'd be here all day. Um, it's got, it's got a lot going for it. It's really, really interesting. I think the scoring mechanisms are a little weird. And I'm still deciding how entirely I feel about it. Because normally when I play the M4S4 games, I, I know um, pretty fast that this is kind of for me or I'm interested. This one's a little bit different. And I think a lot of it is down to its rule book. It has a pretty crippling rule book, which is terrible because I really thought they were, M4S4 were getting better at rule books. This, you know, this isn't the first bad rule book that they've made, sadly. But I think that's the difficulty in translating a game from one language into another. Um, because a lot of the rule books issues are what does this mean or what is this referring to or that there's some specifics just aren't given um and that's and that's difficult for you as a player to try and decipher if you're playing the game correctly or not um you know is this really how things work um and i think it takes away from a lot of the fun element um so yeah bad rule books i think are really terrible for for good games or and even for bad games because they're the first thing you see you know this is your introduction to the game and trying to like trying to get past a difficult rule book um i think ruins a lot of the fun you might have had with the game initially so there's a the question for you actually um what's the worst rule book you've come across and what made it so terrible um and did you continue to persist and try and play the game regardless so the second game that came for review from emperor s4 is something i'm far more certain and happy about and this is um trial of the temples I hope I have that right because they also released a game called Mystery of the Temples. They're not to be confused with each other. They're very different games. Um, and Trial of the Temples is a game in which you are an archmage. And once a year, the archmages gather together to battle in competition to determine who is the victor. 
Uh, yeah, I know. It sounds fairly generic, but how they do it is very unique. Um, this game is stunning. Absolutely freaking gorgeous. I've posted some pictures of it a few places and it is stellar. Um, the center of this board is a circle and they're like the trials where you, you want to go up the track to, to get the victory. And around it are set 12 temples and they are gorgeous. And not only are they gorgeous, but they have a day and a night side and they alternate as you play. Um, and it's full of like beautiful colored crystals, some lovely colored cubes. Um, everything about that game is gorgeous. And it's a really fun one to play as well. So there'll be a full review coming for both of these within the next week or two, um, very, very soon. Um, and I hope you look forward to seeing them as as much as I had fun making them. I Sometimes I forget, especially when I'm not feeling well, that I'm so privileged to be able to create reviews for you guys um, and to have people kind of listen to my opinions on board games. Being able to talk about them is really like the highlight of my life um, and I am not, I'm not kidding at all when I say that, that board games are really important to me and sharing them with people is, I um, don't want to say it's my purpose because that's just weird. But I feel like this is my spot, that this is where I'm kind of meant to be. Um, so yeah, so it's been a fun month because I've basically been playing review copies because I, I need to get reviews done. Normally I get to take a bit of time, I get to play a game, I'll take a break, I'll play it some more. I like to let games sit and stew with me so I can kind of formulate my opinions about them. And having to do them in a particular time frame um not necessarily difficult for me but it's different um and so you know that these have been more intense than normal um but that doesn't you know detract detract from what i think about them or how i played them or anything like that um it's just different so that that's all the excitement in that so have you guys got any bought any new games this last month um you know what did september bring for you I think September is normally like an expensive month for people, especially if you have families or kids going back to school and stuff like that. Um, you know, actually, did you even take out any games you hadn't played in a long time? Because you don't always have to buy new games to enjoy games that you kind of forgotten about that you had, right? Have you gotten to anything on your, I hate that shelf of shame, you know, your unrecognized um, <laughs> potential pile, that kind of thing. Um, let me know if there's anything that basically you've discovered um, this month. So the next part in this is normally where I talk about trades and I have no trades to bring you this month, um, mostly because we're, I think we're almost out of trades at the moment. Um, we did, we sold off a bunch of games that we were unable to trade because um, we needed to make space. We're running out of space. I never thought I'd say that I had so many games I was running out of space. Um, and I can't buy any more shelves because buying shelves means going to Dublin and that's a good bit further away than I'd like to go just yet. Um, so yeah, no trades. Um, I do, I do miss trades. I think trades are like my favourite. But I did have something interesting happen to me which is a friend of mine asked to borrow some of my board games um, and I loaned them out to her and I was wondering how do you guys feel about loaning out your board games is it something you do willingly like would you ever temporarily trade with somebody um, have you done it before has it worked out for you like how well would you need to know somebody to be trusting them with your games um, for me um, my person's incredibly trustworthy, but also there are games I wouldn't have played all that often anyway, so I'm quite happy to, to loan them out. And also I think it encourages more people to play more games. So since I've loaned this person two board games of mine, they've in fact bought two board games, which I thought was kind of rather cute and adorable. And the best part about it was that they called me. <laughs> Yeah, my best friend rang me up and was like, we're buying board games. Tell me, what do you think of this one? Will we like this? Um, that's a really nice moment, isn't it? When people ask you, um, you know, for recommendations. And more importantly, when the recommendation goes down well. So I recommended Potion Explosion and apparently it's gone down really good. Um, and that's just a great feeling. So have you had that happen before where someone asked you about a particular game or you recommended one for them and they really, really loved it? Um, because that sometimes is a really difficult thing to do, especially when you're not familiar with someone's collection. You're like, what are you missing? Do you really need another title laying game or whatnot? Um, so yeah, so I'm quite happy to loan out games to be fair. I think I've got good quality friends that I would trust to return my games to me to be very fair. So um, yeah, I wonder would you do the same or, 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 do, or are you kind of more protective of your games? Um, so that's my question instead of asking about trades. So 
<sighs> okay, so ne next portion. This is the talk about games I've been playing. And to be fair, I've kind of pretty much entirely talked about all of the games I've been playing. Because um, the, the problem with this kind of burnout thing is that I don't really feel like playing games a whole lot right now. Um, and yet I still kind of have to. So I've been trying my best to like keep everything um, simple. Um, I'll try and explain this a, a little bit better. I just, I've been so overwhelmed with everything that's going on and in particular coming up to Essenspiel. I'll talk, I think I'll talk more about that in a moment. So if you've, if you're just here for the board games, you should probably leave now. If you're here for my random natterings about board games, well, please, please continue. Um, I suppose this is what this video is supposed to be, right? This video is a little bit more me and a little bit less games maybe mixed together but um this is just about my experience i suppose of getting ready to go to essence field so as some of you may or may not know um i went last year and i went for a single day which was crazy like absolutely crazy and no one stopped me <laughs> um and so i ended up doing like so much traveling to basically get to essence for like two and a half three hours realize it was so much bigger than i had anticipated um and then managed to nab a few things meet one or two people and get back in a plane and come home and i swore that if i went back this year i would go properly i would go for you know a couple of days and that i wouldn't have to stress so much and worry about everything so this year then i'm going for four days well really three day and night things but i'll be at essen for four days and i'm not going on my own my husband's coming with me um and you may remember him from such videos as let's play because i can't play those videos on my own um and he is just as much into board games as me and of course he plays all of my games with me um so really he's kind of the other half of board game inquisition without necessarily knowing that um and having him with me is already kind of relieving a lot of the stress it would have had of going on my own he's very much my safety blanket um and i think that no matter what happens he would be able to help us like find a way out of it so that in itself is a really awesome thing also we've not had a holiday in forever <laughs> absolutely ever we didn't even really have a honeymoon um so this is this is like ah uh, this is everything uh, which is kind of putting a lot of pressure on the event all at the same time but um i think it's going to be so much fun to be able to go for a couple of days um and kind of you know get out get immersed in, in in board games and things like that get to meet people see new things and hopefully be able to take it kind of at our own pace but knowing all of this is very different from feeling it and i'm definitely feeling the stress and i thought i would if there's one thing i'm getting good at over the past couple of years it's figuring out when i'm going to feel funny about things or when things are going to be really overwhelming and i prepared for this to be overwhelming so i had prepared to um wind, have reviews ready to wind them down for the week or two before essen or further so that i would be able to you know just relax and stuff um and not worry about getting things out on time or filming things and then when i come back um <laughs> i have to figure out what to do after afterwards because obviously everyone's going to want to see the new games um including me so i'm trying to find a new type of video um that will make it easier for me to share the games with you without it having to be kind of so laborious just in something kind of fun you know and easy and that way um i get to continue kind of working without it feeling like i'm working which would be good but my, my main problem is just that I had a bit of a setback and it's kind of branched into S and worry. And as such, I've had no break from um, kind of feeling crappy for quite a bit. And now it's developed into the fact that I can magically make myself sick if I'm stressed enough. So, <laughs> and this all goes well with, you know, having deadlines and things you need to do and, and worries and whatnot. And of course, I, I haven't said this enough, I'm really excited that I'm getting to go to Essen. This is a really, really big deal. Um, I just, I can't help sometimes how I react to things. Um, and this is, this is, this is just how I go and how I have to get used to it. So what I've been doing is kind of making my world as small as possible so that I have kind of the least demands upon me as possible. Um, and that's a really difficult thing to do. Um, and it's also very difficult to have to limit yourself and to admit to yourself that you can't do everything you'd like to do. 
um, and to have to you know make your world smaller like that it's t it's a t it's a tough one so I'm trying my best to keep things simple but also this is my hobby and this is the thing I love to do so how do I you know how do, how, <laughs> how do I reduce that down um, so yeah so I'm in just a bit of a pickle at the minute which is why this video is hard to make and a couple of other things are difficult to do too and I know I'll be fine at the other end of it it just it takes some time um, and it's just all a little bit taxing so yeah so September has been tiring I think that's the best way to put it it's not been a particularly bad month though it's been fun like the games have shown up fantastic it's been amazing to actually get to play these and I can't wait to tell you all about them um, and I'm going to keep this relatively short and sweet um, and when it comes to a wish list I'll be making an Essen wish list video um, like I did last year actually. Um, this is weird having like an annual thing now. Um, I've been going that long that it's an annual thing. So you can kind of hear more about the games that I'm interested in or that I'd like to pick up. Um, so if you have anything you'd like me to check out or think I should look at, um, please let me know and I'll add it into the list. So have you got any favorite picks coming out of Essen? Um, are you actually going? If you are, um, let me know and maybe we can say hi, you know, like passing ships in the night. Um, and if you aren't going, what game would you have picked to go and, you know, grab if at all possible? Um, you know, Essen's a weird one like that because all these releases are coming out. Like it is actually crazy the number of releases if you follow the list. I don't know how anybody keeps up to date with any of that kind of stuff. Um, but if you do, I'd like to know what's caught your eye or what you're interested in or if there's something I should be going to look at while I'm there and I can maybe bring back information. Um, I'm hoping to make some videos while I am there. I'm bringing my camera equipment. I've ordered extra batteries. Um, so I'm gonna do my best to try and convey to you, you know, what, what the fair is like. Um, so I'd love to know kind of what you'd like to know about, um, what you'd like to hear about, what you'd like to see perhaps. Like is this, there a particular style of um, kind of con, con videos that, that's, that you particularly enjoy or are good? It's something I've not done before, you know, and I've watched some other people's ones and I'm like, how do they hold their camera so steady? I just, I don't know, my camera's a bit big for that. So I'll do my best and yeah, I, I guess, you know what guys, the next time I do my monthly roundup, I'll be just back. Be like the Wednesday afterwards, uh, this should be out. So that should be exciting. The next video will be the bumper one, I assume, um, which is why this one is so slight. Um, but yeah, all good. So yeah, the end of September, hurrah! <laughs> I hope yours has been better than mine. Let me know how you've been getting on or what you've been up to, what games you've been playing. You know, the kind of usual stuff. I, I really love hearing from you guys. I really appreciate it when you take the time to write because I know that's not something everybody has time to do all the time. And there are a couple of you who always leave comments and I appreciate it so so much and even what and of course watching um is brilliant too but it's lovely to hear from you to know you're real people and and what you're doing out there so I'm sorry this was so sappy <laughs> and I should wrap it up now so I will so until next time I'll be here playing games asking questions and panicking about Eschenspiel take care everybody bye bye